Hey everyone, this is Scott Volker, and what I want to do today is answer a question that came in the other day. I received an email from Cindy, and um, I actually uh, I replied back to her, but I wanted to actually get Joe Marshall, who is our lighting and camera uh, expert on our forum. I wanted to get his input on this because I have my own uh, my own take on it, and I just want to read the question real quick. It's a really good question, and I think a lot of people are uh, are asking. Uh, themselves the same question. So I'm just going to read the question and I'm going to answer it the best that I can. This is something that uh, Joe and I are going to try to do from time to time, uh, try to get on the line and actually answer a question live. So the more questions that we receive, the more of these we'll be able to do and hopefully uh, reach out there and help as many people as we can. So here we go. Uh, Here's the email that I, I received. It says, Hey Scott, thanks again for all your great ideas, tips and help. Love the videos and watch, and I watch them over and over again. She says, my question is when you're shooting for the purpose of inserting your subject into a digital prop, do you shoot in raw or JPEG? I have people here with so many different opinions. Look forward to hearing from you. Keep well and keep sending those fantastic videos. Uh, Cindy. Anyway, uh, Joe, my my take is on on uh, you know raw and JPEG is, I mean JPEG is is going to be good enough. Uh, what's your take on it? And then I'm going to add my two cents. You're the you're the guy that's going to have all the technical uh, responses for it. But what's your take on it? Well, these are those questions that come up. It's uh, almost like the Chevy Ford type of thing. Uh, those who shoot raw and those who shoot JPEG. It's surprising uh, number of professional photographers that still use JPEG. We haven't gone to RAW, myself included. Um, with the props, I think what you give us as a, as a prop is already color balanced and pretty much there in the ballpark. And you know Anything we want to do to it, we can kind of like blur it or, or, or change a color if we want to to make it match our subject. But you've given it in a JPEG already f- formula. All we need to do is shoot a JPEG of our subject, cut it out, and we wanted to also mention that cutting out and extracting the person is, is already enough time-intensive work. I don't know if we need to then go do everything in RAW to get the subject ready for that. No, I, yeah, and I, I just think I just want to, I want to clear this up, though, too. Whether you're shooting it for a digital background or a digital prop um, to be inserted or not, um, I think this just goes hand-in-hand hand with, uh, you know, whatever you're shooting, it doesn't matter if you're shooting portraiture, uh, if you're shooting landscapes, if you're shooting any of that stuff, you know, if you have your settings where they're pretty close and you've experimented enough to get it where your white balance is where it needs to be, your exposure where it needs to be, there's really no reason to go into the raw settings. I found personally, when I was shooting raw, I did try it, I experimented with it, and I found that I was spending so much time and then coming back to it later and saying, ah, maybe that white balance isn't what I want. And, you know, I was playing around with it too much. I was spending way too much time on, on, the, uh, on the image. So I found I would get it really close in the JPEG. And then uh, from there, I can just tweak it with my levels or my curves or saturation, hue, contrast, whatever, to tweak the image. So that's my take on it. So I'd say get it close the first time and then, uh, and then just run with it. Whether you're using digital props or backgrounds for, you know, for your photography needs. Uh, just get it close and then tweak it in a JPEG setting. That's my personal opinion. I think you're agreeing with that, but we are going to get some people that are going to disagree with that, and that's okay. If you want to sit there and um, and you know go through all your raw settings and play around with all your settings, then you know go right ahead. You got a lot more time on your hands than I do. Uh, Joe. Well, uh, beginners uh, tend to use raw or, or or think they need to because they don't have their exposures down. Uh, they're not used to their flash. Uh, and different uh, modifiers and so they think that the raw will get them there if they shoot it absolutely horrible and to an effect that's true Uh, if you play around too much in raw you'll introduce even more noise into a picture so uh, it's not always the right answer but as you get further along we try to tell people get it right in the camera and then you have less tweaking to do the photoshop that you do do use would be an enhancement if you want to make the color balance to match early afternoon or, or you know, late sunset, that's up to you. That's later on when you see the picture and you figure out how you want to make the mood. But um, JPEGs will give you at least a good color and color balance and well-exposed picture. And that's all you need for the cutout. Okay, so I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up with that. I think we uh, went through everything, and I think that we both agree 
get it right the first time, shoot JPEG, and, uh, and go ahead and run with it. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up for this little Q&A call. And uh, keep shooting, keep the questions coming, and we'll talk to you later.